And that is why these are honestly the best things we've ever found and sourced from the Salvation Army. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some items that are directly from the Salvation Army. Something that should net us a whole bunch of money. Now we just found a bunch of buttons. Here's just a couple of examples from the Salvation Army. Now these date to the founding years of the organization and they were worn on uniforms for band members for regular uniforms as well for many, many years back in those earliest days. Now we picked up a bunch of these value wise we should get at least 50 to 75 bucks a pop for each and every one of them they sell extremely well for us these sorts of things do show up from time to time many people aren't aware that the salvation army went back that far or that it's international as well there are tons of things tied to the salvation army itself now the salvation army actually was basically set up just like an actual military army they had uniforms uniforms, badges, uh, buttons, belts, buckles, hats, boots, whatever you can think of. They even made some of their own musical instruments for their band as well as for other people. They also have sheet music tied to them, songbooks, postcards, letterheads, photos, CDVs. You name it, they probably have it out there somewhere. They date back to the mid-19th century, so there is a huge amount of time for them to have produced tons of various items. Now, one thing many people are unaware of is that one of their mottos was blood and fire. It sounds more like a military quote than anything else to me, but you can see several examples of it right here. Now, they did have a shield, and anytime I run into anything that looks like this right here, I know I've got something really nice. They actually have large versions versions of them which you can see right here this is an original one from about 1910 some of them would have been worn on their uniform like where a police badge would be worn or on their hats this is one of the earlier style of logos now the leader of the Salvation Army was designated as a general he was truly a general from what I understand a soldier as a general of the Salvation Army and as you can see, the uniforms do look very similar to the uniforms of the military of this time frame. They actually helped during World War I, World War II, and even before that. It wasn't just a male organization. There were women involved, too. Here's one holding a flag. Here's another one where you can clearly see the uniform looks very, very similar to a military uniform of the 1800s. Here's yet another interesting photo, and you can see the woman has the Salvation Army badge right there. Now, the Salvation Army also had a school, a church, a convent, the whole works, all tied to it. You can even run into yearbooks from some of these places. Now, here's an excellent example of a Salvation Army band. Most of the equipment, all the instruments you see, were probably made by them as well. Another interesting aspect of the Salvation Army is that they covered the globe at one time. Now, here's an interesting photo from Australia of some of their cinematographers that were part of the Salvation Army. So they cover the gamut of any type of organization. This all happened long before they had thrift stores. Thrift stores are more of a semi-modern day invention for the Salvation Army, all used to help fund good causes. Now, some of the items you may run into are shields, signs, and things like this. Here's an excellent example. This one, I believe, is enameled porcelain, and it sold for 450 bucks. Now, dolls, toys are another area most people would not assume to find anything tied to the Salvation Army, but that is not the case. Some of them are very collectible. They're done in limited quantity. There's various size versions as well. Here is a 12-inch Simpich character doll of a Salvation Army lady. It's 12 inches tall, so it's a very large one. $357. There's another group by a different company. These four here sold for $125. Now, as I said, the person in charge of the Salvation Army was a general. Here is a tobacco jar of General William Booth, who was one of the early founders of it as well. Sold for well over $100, and it does have some issues with it. As you can see, his hat is missing some of the paint. Some of the wording where it says Salvation Army is gone. It's still sold for very nice money. 
Now here's an excellent example of a Salvation Army tuba. Actually is marked as being made by the Salvation Army. $194 plus shipping. Now they didn't just make dolls, they made all sorts of different types of Salvation Army characters. This is a nodder. The head moves up and down. The lady is actually carrying a Bible and a pamphlet, 175 bucks. It's not in super, super condition. The outfit she's wearing is clearly the right colors. It has the stripes on the sleeve, so it is most definitely a Salvation Army worker. On top of that, Britain's made toy soldiers for the Salvation Army. Here's a perfect example of a woman with a tambourine. Same basic uniform. The headgear is basically the same you'll see in most of the early photos. This is typical of the early days of Britain-led soldiers. $148. Now, they also had vehicles that they used in the daily functions of the Salvation Army. Some of the vehicles were owned by the Salvation Army. Some of them were delivery. This is what would be called a car badge or a medallion for the radiator. That's usually where you see some of these mounts. Sometimes they're mounted onto the early bumpers, the big solid cast metal bumpers, still sold for about $100 in U.S. currency. Now here's a great example of a cabinet photo, an early photograph of Salvation Army uh, employees as well as their kids. You can clearly see the SA on his collar. The wife, I would imagine, is part of the group. You can see the same basic uniform we saw on the Nodder as well as in the Britain's Lead Soldier. Kids are dressed similarly. They do have what looks like badges or ribbons on. Excellent example, $125. Now here's something from one of the uniforms themselves. It's not super, super old. It's from the 1960s. It's still sold for 80 bucks. Most all of the hats look like this. They're almost identical in construction to military at the time as well as is fraternal. Now here is one that would have been worn on a hat. Now this would have been used in a canteen which would have serviced U.S. soldiers or really any soldiers. About a hundred dollars on this piece here. It would have been stitched or riveted on to the front of one of their hats. Now there's a ton of paper items tied to the Salvation Army. There's books, pamphlets, brochures, posters like this World War I Salvation Army Lassie. Oh boy, that's a girl poster. Really interesting one without a doubt. 85 bucks with some excellent artwork as you can see. They would have supplied any services they could have. This is for, I guess, a donut giveaway uh, at the front to try and build up morale. Here's yet another interesting war-related item from World War II. This is a Salvation Army employee, and it's a badge. Now, this was probably something from his sweetheart while he was in service overseas helping soldiers at a USO facility or something along that line. The wife, uh, his loved one, would have worn this badge in support of him. It sold for right around $100 as well. Now here's that same shield logo. Now many people may not realize that this is Salvation Army, but if you look on the left side, you see the S and then the A. So it's a Salvation Army junior soldier. It has the shield, it has the crown and the whole works. This piece here sold for 82 US dollars. This is probably a British piece. Now here is an example of another Salvation Army piece from Canada. It's got the leaf with the beaver, and it says Salvation Army. It could be a hat badge, a collar disc, uh, a breast badge, or anything along that line. Excellent item, to say the least. And one last thought here. The Salvation Army had the bands, and they produced records, and they still do. In the 60s and 70s, they produced religious-oriented songs, but used a garage rock, psychedelic almost, tone to them. So there are some records, 45s, 78s, LPs, that can sell for a large amount of money. Now this is just an example of the wide range of items that you can find, all tied to the Salvation Army. You don't have to go into a Salvation Army to make money from the Salvation Army. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why do postal clerks get indigestion? There are many reasons. I won't bother to list them. It's all the stamp glue we take into our systems. I guess that's as logical as a man could get. But that's not the reason for their stomach upset. It's from trying to read the American hand, illegibly written throughout the land. This letter will prove exactly what we've said. The name of the city simply can't be read. Oakdale. Oakfield. Oakhurst. Oak Park. Oakwood. Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa? 